Good morning, John Galinsky here at Crane Training and Safety Consultants. Today we're going to talk about friction cranes and controlled load lowering and the difference between the, the older cranes and the new cranes. Okay? Many times I get people and these young students in my classroom and we start talking in OSHA about free fall and controlled load lowering. They have no idea what we're talking about. The earlier cranes did not have any of the new hydraulic pumps and, mech and drives that the newer cranes have. Okay? They were all run by um, <coughs> friction cranes and they were direct drive. A lot of them had master clutches and torque converters. That's not the way it is today. This is a 1966 American 4250. It is a 35-ton friction crane. This is the American 4250 on the inside. Okay, right here we have a uh, 471 Detroit engine. But right here is what we have, which is called the draw works. Okay, we have our boom hoist here, we have our load hoist, and we have our gear drive system. Okay, this is a lot different than the newer cranes. The newer cranes just have hydraulic pumps that run all this. This is a direct drive system. Okay, when we engage the master clutch, everything will be directly to connected to the, to the engine. That is not like today with the new hydraulic cranes, where you have a hydraulic pump operating everything. Okay, right now we're looking at the back of the engine where our transmission is. Connected from the transmission is what's called your master clutch. Okay, it's just like a standard transmission in a car. It's exactly like that. When we want to engage this, we, pull, we, we directly pull our master clutch in and it directly drives the engine to the master clutch. The master clutch is cooked, connected to this big uh, gear that runs all of our, pla our, our uh, planetaries and everything inside of our uh, <clears throat> crane here. So when we do that, inside this big chain box that we got right here, it directly drives all of our hoist mechanisms. Hoist, swing, travel, everything here. Okay, this is old technology, but it's still out there. Now, it's not used in New York City anymore because we're not allowed to have any of cranes older than 25 years old. This is a 1966, but they do still require to have the friction endorsement on your NCCO. So this is the reason why we do our testing on this crane. Very, very simple crane, okay? We have our hoist, our swing, and our <clears throat> travel. That's it. Hoist, swing, travel, and boom. Okay, everything is right here in front of us, very accessible, okay? We have all of our gear train. We have our boom hoist cable here. We have our swing mechanisms here, right and left, okay? And then we have our hoist cables and our boom hoist cable, and everything is very, very accessible. Okay, right now my operator, Chris, is going to engage the transmission to the engine by pulling in the master clutch. Go ahead, Chris. All right, now all of my drives are engaged. Everything is working. Okay, my engine is directly connected to my transmission, transmission to my draw works. Okay, so right now we have our draw works are all engaged from our master clutch. So we have our hoist drum here and we have our drives to our hoist drum. So how does this work? We have an inner set of brakes, just like on an old drum brakes and an outer set. When my operator engages the hoist mechanism, the inner brakes apply and the hoist line goes up. When my operator releases, he has to hold the brake and the outer set of brakes work. Okay, so I'm gonna tell my operator to hoist. He's hoisting up. And he holds the brakes back over to here. Okay. Good. This crane being that it has a transmission, you can only do certain functions at the same time, okay? I can only swing, hoist, and boom. And I cannot travel at the same time, okay? Since it has a transmission and a master clutch and a direct drive system. The early Manitowoc 2900s, they had the same, same technology, okay? Then Manitowoc came out with a torque converter, just like a car, had a single stage torque converter. Okay, when we applied the brake on the crane, the engine would not stall. On this crane here, since it has a transmission, if I apply my brakes when I have my uh, <clears throat> hoist engaged, I can stall the engine out. I have to release my brake. Okay? Then when I release my brake, I'm in free fall mode. The load will come down until the operator applies his brake again. So we have two bands here. We have an inner band and an outer band. When the operator applies the hoist, the load goes up. Uh, the inner band applies, the load goes up. When he, when he releases the brake for the hoist, when he releases the hoist engagement, the, he has to apply his brake with the outer shoes because then it will hold it. Now on the torque converter, okay, when Manitowoc came out with that, he, the operator could apply the brake, 
and the engine would not stall. He could hold that as long as he wanted to. Okay. Then Manitowoc came out with a new technology called the, the it was a uh, two-stage torque converter. Okay, and they they incorporated something called the Vicon. Okay, what happened was we we well now we could do several functions. We could walk, we could crawl the crane, we could boom the crane, we could hoist the crane, we could swing the crane. All these functions at the same time, which was Manitowoc technology. The old 4100s had that, which were an excellent crane, probably one of the best cranes they ever built. Very very strong crane. Okay. That was the new technology. You got to remember, all these old cranes did not have computers in them. The load chart was on the side wall of the of the cab. Okay, if you wanted to know how far you could go out, you got your load chart out. You measured your radius, your boom angle. You know what your weight of your load was. Okay, there wasn't even any Anna two blocks. The Anna two block didn't come out until it wasn't mandatory until 2011. So this particular crane is a true friction crane. Okay, so that's why. So when we talk about free fall. We have to make sure that when we release our foot off of our, our hoist line, we have our foot on our brake, otherwise the load will come down. Now when we talk about hoisting personnel, we can't use any type of crane like this because it is a free fall crane. And actually if you look at the 1926-1400, uh, OSHA specifically talks about when you're allowed to have free fall and when you're not allowed to have free fall. So that's something we learned in class, we talk about that in class and we go over that specifically. So again, this is old technology, no computers. Nothing, they're a very basic crane, but there's still many of them out there. You go down south to some of these others, any type of marine contractors, they love these cranes on barges, they're excellent for pile driving work, okay? The newer cranes have a computer system, and we, are, we will be talking about the Manitowoc MLC-165s, the MLC-150s, the MLC-100s, and the new technology, which is all run by pumps. They have hydraulic pumps, but they still have a braking system internal. All right, now I'm going to pass you off over to Dan here. We're over here at Hoffman Equipment, and we're going to talk about the new Manitowoc technology on the crawler cranes. Right. Hi, my name's uh, Dan from Hoffman Equipment, and today uh, we're going to be going over the free fall on this MLC 150. As John said, this is an all hydraulic crane now. These are the hydraulic pumps. Um, this is uh, electrical and hydraulic. So we have hydraulic uh, valves right here that we have to switch when we're going to free fall uh, operation and it has a mechanical lock. So I'll just demonstrate that now. We have to remove these lock pins and then we have to turn the valves. Now that we're in free fall mode, uh, what we have is this is a disc brake setup, unlike what John was talking about, the older drum brake style, like on a car. So this has a wet type disc brake. Uh, it's a fully enclosed unit with cooling oil that runs through it to keep it cool under operation. And it's just completely enclosed now. So a little bit different than the old rigs. To continue on with our discussion on the free fall on this MLC 150, I have Joe here, a technician from Manitowoc here at Hoffman's Yard in Piscataway. And Joe's gonna explain how the whole system works and how easy it is to put into the free fall mode. We're sitting in the cab of this MLC 150. Uh, it's pretty standard layout, very similar to a lot of the MLC series. Uh, the most basic thing that's the same in all of these cranes is gonna be our two computer screens here. Uh, this is your CCS control system, which is now the same in all of the Manawak product lines, excluding the tower cranes and boom trucks. So our upper screen here is going to be all of your LMI stuff, your uh, rated capacity. So it's going to show uh, everything that's going on with the crane, your counterweight, your boom angle, your radius, uh, your load chart, your line pull, parts of line, what you're capable of picking up, what you have on the load, your tear. And then our lower screen is how we control all of our different uh, crane functions. So down the right side we have all of our different functions and whether they're parked or not. So one thing Manawak always has is park brakes for every function. So right here we have all of our park brakes for each function, the same as what's listed here on the side of the screen. Then if I release drum one, indicated there, you can see it releases on the screen, it comes live. Then I release the park brake on drum two, which is our auxiliary line. Uh, then that's showing both of those functions are live. 
so now it's showing that we're in hydraulic mode which uh, they will indicate right here once these come live and that'll also show when we're in free fall which I'll go over later. So our two drum control handles are right here, drum one and drum two, and you can option this with a third drum which the handle would be right here. In regular hydraulic mode, once I release the park brake, the functions are live, the, cr the drum will stop turning when I let go of the handle. It automatically sets the park brake un unless I'm hitting the handle. Yeah. So the same as our two handles, drum one is on the left and drum two is on the right. And when we're in free fall mode, as long as these pedals are down, the drum won't turn and get pulled down by the weight of the load, including the block. I have a lock here that I could release with the corner of my foot, release it all the way up, and then that's how I meter the load going up and down. And I could lock it down back to drum park. With this screen, now I can press this bottom left menu button and I can scroll down and select our free fall control screen. Okay, that. Oh, our free, okay. Now that we're in the free fall control screen, I have two options here. For drum one, I can control how much the brake releases and then how my pedal feels. So these two things are the electronic way of controlling what in the old cranes would be controlled by uh, turning bolts and nuts back by the clutches and the brakes on the drums. So this is totally eliminating all of that linkage and everything. You're just doing everything hydraulically through the computer. So on drum one, since we're on four parts of line and there's a block on it, you're pulling uh, more parts align. I have it so it's released more, but I could select that and turn it up so that way the brake will release 100%. So there's less resistance once the pedal's all the way up. There's, there's nothing holding it back. If I go back down to 85 where I had it, now the drum will open 85%, the brake will open 85%, it will have 15% of the brake dragging on its way down. The pedal control is how your pedal feels. So it's how far into the pedal, up and down, your brake will be fully locked. All right, so you can just control that up and down, select it, however the operator prefers it. So now we have the machine running. As you can see, we're reading RPM, we're at idle. I'm gonna turn both of the drums on, one and two. So I'm unparking those. Now it is in hydraulic mode. I can go down. As you can see, we have an indicator of the drum turning. Or I could go up. And you can see that it stops and holds on its own. You also notice that the handle is clicking, which is a common thing in uh, cranes across all product lines, that when the drum is turning, you'll have a clicking indication based on how fast the drum is actually turning. So now, with this switch here, I can control drum one and drum two's free fall simply by turning, selecting drum one, and you see that an arrow is now on, pointing down on drum one and then drum two. So now that my pedals are locked down, nothing's moving, but once I release drum one's pedal, once I release that lock, I can slowly let off of the brake, and you'll notice, you'll start to hear the handle click, and we have an indicator on the screen again. Then I can slowly go down, and it stops. Another thing that you can do that's only on the Manawak MLC product line, is you can release your brake, your foot brake, and then you can control free fall with the handle. So I could pull back on the handle and it'll stop. And if I pull back even farther, it'll start going up. And then I could let down. And if I let off of the handle, it'll start going down again. Then I can pull back and stop it without even using my foot pedal. And I can lock my foot pedal back down and then it stops. So basically what you're doing is you can control up and down in using the free fall with only your handles. The only difference between that and your normal hydraulic mode when you're doing that then is when you let off the handle, it won't park. 
And this concludes our session on the uh, MLC 150 free fall mode. Thank you very much.